Hey everyone, welcome to our second argument writing lesson. Today we're actually going to begin thinking about what makes an argument worthy of our efforts, worthy of the research that we do to produce it, and most importantly, worthy of the audiences um, that we share our arguments with. There are many, many people who make arguments all day long. And perhaps what distinguishes an argument from an opinion is the fact that an argument is not only grounded in facts, but when we make great arguments, we consider and anticipate how people might disagree with us and we find evidence or research um, to refute those claims, to challenge the people who might disagree with us. We're all used to sharing our opinions. An opinion is something like, I love pizza. And we're certainly entitled to our own opinions if they're only affecting us. But when we impose opinions on other people or even share them with other people in a way that might move them to act or think in a certain way, if our, our, if our opinions are not based on facts, if they're not actually claims that are evidence-based, then people can get hurt. Um, they can get hurt emotionally, they can get hurt physically, they can hurt other people as well. Um, they can make decisions that are less than ideal, or at the very least, based on a false reality. An opinion is based on what we think and what we feel, but it's not necessarily rooted in fact. Persuasive writing uh, and persuasion in general is where we try to influence other people to take action or to adopt our beliefs or our values. But again, persuasion does not necessitate the use of facts or evidence. What makes argument so valuable is that it does rely on facts and evidence. And so before we even begin to compose an argument, I want you to spend some time thinking about what makes an argument worth making and also what makes an argument worthy of considering as well if you're an audience member. The best arguments that we share are based on evidence and they're also attentive to what other people might think and what other people might need in a particular moment. Great arguments serve other people well. They do good out in the world. And they do take into account how others might disagree. They anticipate how others might disagree and they use evidence to refute those claims or, or um, counterpoints, counter arguments. Great arguments usually begin with writers who don't come at the topic with an opinion but instead with curiosity. So what I'm going to encourage you to begin thinking about are topics or concepts, ideas that you want to know more about. And I'm going to encourage you over the next series of lessons to investigate those topics, um, to investigate those concepts and ideas without forming an opinion at first. Use the evidence that you gather to shape your claim and to shape the argument that you make and to anticipate counter arguments as well. So great arguments are grounded in evidence. They serve other people well. They are attentive to and sensitive to and responsive to counterclaims or those who might disagree. And they're also very sensitive to what people need to be hearing right now in this moment in time. I'm going to ask you to take a peek at several examples of high quality arguments. I've left them in the links for you. There are a lot of different resources there. You will not be able to read all of the examples that I've shared. I'm giving you a bunch of them so that you can choose ones that you're interested in taking a peek at. You might also have an example of one that you value and that you found on your own, and it's fine to work with that as well. What I'd like you to do is explore some examples of high quality arguments, keeping the criteria that I just shared with you in mind, and then use what you've learned to address the prompts um, that are in writing on this particular homepage. Remember, if you have questions, you need to reach out to your teacher first, and if he or she can't help you, 
um, that person will connect with me and that'll keep our lines of communication really clear. I hope that you find some interesting arguments and I hope that exploring them in this way starts to help you define what a high quality argument might look like um, before we start diving in ourselves. Enjoy your work and your learning and I'll see you tomorrow.